So a study came out recently claiming that fasting can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, recently there was one about uh, eating red meat can cause diabetes, which seemed ridiculous. And this one seems equally ridiculous. So today we're gonna have a look at this. <laughs> this one is equally ridiculous. It wasn't just cardiovascular disease. It was actually deaths oh, from death. cardiovascular disease, which is an even harder end point, as we say in the research world, that there's no ambiguity about a death. It's not, you had a bit of angina. It's, you know, you're, you're deceased and it's got cardiovascular disease on your death certificate. So, um, so, so I'm with Dr. Zoe Harcombe and she is, um, basically, this is what you do every week. You yeah, look yeah. at the latest studies, you look at the data, you look at the research, how they conducted the research, and then you contact the person who did it is normally how it works. So, I mean, obviously, fasting and intermittent fasting, you know, having an, um, you know, a, a, a sort of eight to 16 hour period in the day where you don't eat or, or just eating within an eight hour has become a huge thing um, so far everything I've read or seen or witnessed has been that this is a very helpful thing to do. So it sounds like they are now saying the exact opposite of what we've all been led to believe. So what are they basing yeah. this on? Well, yeah, so, I mean, we really need to unpack this one. Okay. First of all, this is not a published academic paper. Right. So this came from um, that people hold conferences. So this was a conference held by the American Heart Association, and they've got massive funding from fake food organizations so it's not in their interest to be pumping out information saying don't eat for a long period of time um, particularly anything uh -oh. healthy like don't eat yeah. after your evening meal because that's when people snack and that's when you're more likely to eat the stuff from the kind of sponsors that this organization has got so it was what we call a poster presentation so I don't normally look at those I normally only wait until there's a peer-reviewed article but this poster was actually, it actually had quite a lot of information on it. So I thought, okay, everyone's talking about this. I need to just go with what I've got and look at the poster information. So the first thing that you said, which is very important, is when we look at people who are fasting today, we see it as quite a healthy thing to do. So this study was based, they're, they're always based on a population study, which means they take a group of people and they follow them over a number of years and they see what happened to them. And the start of the study might have been back in the 1980s. Now, the start of this study was in the early part of this century. Right. So always with one of these um, population studies that involves food, they start off with what we call a food frequency questionnaire. And those are just notoriously unreliable. So if I said to you, what did you eat in April last year? You're not going to be able to tell me. Um, and some of them do say, what do you typically eat on a weekday or what did you typically eat during last year? Um, some of them say, what did you eat in the last 24 hours? And you've been filming that might be completely different to how you eat in the normal 24 hour period. So they're notoriously unreliable. So these two snapshots, they did two snapshots. I think one was between about 2000 and the, the, I've got the stuff in my report anyway. It's around 2003. Um, and the second one is somewhere around 2005. So they basically said to people, what did you eat yesterday? And anyone who ended up in what they put as an eight hour window, they said, well, you're a fasting kind of person. Um, so who would that be back in 2003? And this is in America. This was an American right. study. Um, and then when I always look at the characteristics table in a study, because what that tell you is, tells you is, the people that ended up in that eight hour window, um, were they mostly male? Were they mostly white? Were they mostly young? And you've got the characteristics of that person and the people who ended up eating for 16 hours a day or more. I mean, when did they ever sleep? Um, <laughs> what, what, what are their characteristics? So I'm, I'm trying to picture who is that person who's only eating for eight hours a day? Is it someone who can't afford to eat? three meals a day you right. know bearing in mind this is america and there'll be some and it's supposed to be nationally representative of the american population so there will be some very poor areas um because you're also talking about the early 2000s yeah. so an intermittent is fasting it, hadn't really become yeah, a it's, 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 it's not intermittent fasting as we're doing it right um, is it someone who woke up and was a bit hungover from the night before, so just didn't fancy breakfast and had some coffee, loads of black coffee in the morning and some cigarettes because they were higher 
um, propensity of smoking in that group. So they were living on coffee until about midday and then they go and eat some McDonald's and fries and um, some other kind of rubbish. And then they happen to have dinner at about six or seven o'clock. And then for the rest of the day, it's back on the black coffee and smoking. Right. That could be the profile of someone who would meet that under right. eight hours category. Right. So they had people in under eight hours. They had people in eight to 10 hours. They had people in 10 to 12 hours and then people in 12 to 16 hours, which is a much bigger group. And then people who are eating for more than 16 hours a day. So you're not even getting eight hours sleep. And one of the things that I spotted when I looked at it, what you're supposed to do when you're comparing groups of people to make it fair, you're supposed to pe put people into equal numbers. Right. So you've got a thousand people. You should have had 200 in the bottom group, 200 in that group, 200, 200, 200. So yeah. you could compare in the same number yeah. of people. Yeah. So they had about 20,000 people that they studied. Only 400 said they ate within below eight hours a day they were eating for, which right. is a tiny proportion yeah, yeah. Of, of the whole study. And yet in the group to which they were comparing them, 60% of people were in that group. It's like, so you're comparing the main population with a really quite unusual group with a really quite unusual profile. And then you're trying to make claims for this small group relative to this big standard group. I mean, in terms of statistics, you can't do that. Um, and did they, did, was it only the early 2000s or did they include people who were doing intermittent fasting now who would possibly be doing it quite differently and for different reasons? So that's, that's the interesting thing about these population studies. So they do the questionnaires at baseline and they almost never then repeat them. Oh. So the people who were eating more than 16 hours a day back in 2003 might today be, be dead. intermittent fasting carnivores. <laughs> yeah. They, they might have completely changed their diet. If they lived that long. Yeah, well, if they died, then then, then they counted as a death. Right. Um, and that's another interesting thing about this study. So it was looking at all deaths. It was looking at cancer deaths and it was looking at cardiovascular disease deaths. And it found even doing this really uneven group thing, it found nothing whatsoever for all deaths, nothing whatsoever for cancer deaths. And it only found this one result for cardiovascular deaths. So when I when I go into a paper like this, I look at the number of different permutations that they've looked at. So if I just say to you, there were 36 different results that they measured and only four of those found anything. So the vast majority of this study found nothing, but the one headline that screams out is this cardiovascular nonsense. That's unbelievable because this actually, as they always do, the press picks up on it and then you get these headlines all over the place and they are so misleading. Yeah. And do you know, I mean, this it is real... sounds like this sounds like this whole test is a, a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, it, it is a bunch of nonsense. If I, okay, so you've got 20,000 people OK, and the one headline that really made it big was you've got a 91 percent greater chance of cardiovascular death. If you're in that below, you eat if for fewer if you're than eight hours fasting. a day. Yeah. If you're intermittent so, fasting, a 91 percent chance of death. Yes. Well, actually, I wouldn't even call it intermittent fasting. I would just say if you happen to be in that weird group of people who back in 2003 were only eating for eight hours a day for 16 hours of the day they were smoking or drinking or eat, having coffee or whatever but they weren't eating or they didn't declare that they eat maybe they just forgot they had breakfast um that's the kind of group of people we're talking about we're not talking about intermittent fasting people today so study of twenty thousand people you get headlines like this all around the world how many deaths do you think that that headline number was based on well, now that you've explained the study to me. <laughs> and how small were in that group. Not many. Yeah, 32. 32. So in that group of 400 people that said, I eat for fewer than eight hours a day, out of 20,000, which is already only 2% of your entire study, 30, was it 31, did I say? 31 people, yeah, 31 people died. So I actually worked it out here. So the global headlines were based on 0.15% of people who A, said they eat for fewer than eight hours a day and B, died. Wow. And that's what your global headline was based on in a study of 20,000. Now, if that's not misleading people. So misleading. And I actually think it's immoral. I think yeah. it's absolutely moral. And as you were saying, you know, they are, they are governed and compromised 
by funding from food companies who want you to eat. They don't want yeah. you to eat. They don't want yeah. you to fast. They want you to eat for as many hours in the day as possible that they can make a profit. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just, it just, it, it's just, it all seems so compromised to me and completely and utterly immoral and how very, very misleading because there are a lot of people, I know a lot of people who do fasting and do this intermittent fasting. It's become very, very popular. And, um, and they will have just seen the headline. They wouldn't have yeah. known any of what we're talking about. And they would then become deeply concerned about what they're doing. That is actually a very healthy thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. So for me, the least healthy group would be anyone who's eating for more than 16 hours a day. Not least because you just can't be getting enough sleep. Well, yes, um, and because and because the digestive process takes absolutely. up so much energy in your body. Yeah. So yeah. the more you eat and the more often you eat, the more tired and drained you're going to feel, yeah. aren't you? Because yeah. it's a very you know, energy consuming process, digestive. Yeah. Yeah. And so, wow. OK, well, just in case if any of you were out there and saw that headline, I think you're pretty free to completely ignore it. Yeah. And find a window that works for you. I mean, if you. Yeah. Eight hours might be too few for a lot of people. It would be it would be too few for me because I like my breakfast as soon as I wake up. Fasting is not for everybody. And this is a whole mm. other subject as well. And they say for women. I mean, you know, I didn't eat breakfast for many years. I do sometimes now. Because apparently it doesn't always work for women and it can create cortisol, you know, who wants more stress hormones, you know, so it is quite a complex, it is quite a complex thing, but you just judge by how you look and you yeah. feel and the state of your health. And I'm yeah. a great believer in listening to your body. Yeah. And, you know, if anybody has um, an eating disorder of any kind, I would say intermittent fasting is not good and you should absolutely stick to three meals a day. Um, but then it comes down to snacking between your meals. Yeah. You know, there are, there are different ways of going about it. Yeah. Snacking and grazing through the day, not, not a good, good thing. No. Um, so, yeah, but very interesting. Thank you for clarifying Pleasure. that. Pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> if, it, if it sounds nonsense, it probably is. <laughs> Trust your instinct. Yes, I am learning to do that. <laughs>